I scored a comic collection that's probably worth upwards of over $10,000, all because I recognized this portion of this cover. This story is pretty wild. Hey guys, welcome to the Paper Chase channel. Story time, and I'm gonna show you some really cool books right after it's done. But I've been holding this back for a while. This is pretty much the greatest comic collection I have bought to date. I'm talking about what I paid versus the estimated value of what this is worth. And I can't wait to share it with you, so we're gonna dive right in. So one day, somebody replied to one of my Craigslist ads about me buying comics. And this guy had said him and his buddies found like 20-something long boxes outside of an abandoned house. So they decided to take them all, put them in the back of his truck, and transport them back to his place. But on the way there, it actually started to pour down rain, and half of these books were completely damaged, and he threw them away. I still lose sleep sometimes at night thinking about what was in the other half of this collection. So he brings it all back to his house. He unloads about 12 to 13 long boxes and he stored it in his garage for probably about a year. His wife absolutely loved this. So flash forward, present day, I asked this guy, I said, okay, what are we talking about here? What kind of books, what can you show me? He proceeds to send me some stills and some videos of the collection just sitting in his garage. Now what I'm seeing is books that are unbagged, unboarded, some of them still have some moisture stains and moisture damage on them, completely out of order, and nothing but DC Comics. One year ago, if you were to take all of those things combined, that are some of the biggest turnoffs for any comic buyer that you can get. Oh, and, and here's the kicker. The collection is in Kissimmee, Florida. That is about a nine hour drive from New Orleans from where I live. That is a long way to go if you're not going to see the Rat King. I was about ready right there to just say, man, I'm sorry. Thanks for reaching out, but this is just a big dump, big waste of time. I can't get into this. But I didn't. I said, you know what? Let me go home later when I can really concentrate and, and try to look into these videos and see if I can pick apart what is in here. So I'm starting to look at covers and stills and I'm starting to scrub through video footage like freaking Eric Voss from New Rock Stars. And finally it hit me. A shoe came across the room. Crystal was like, get off your damn phone and hang out with me. And I was like, but wait, I think I see something here. And this is what I saw sitting in a random stack of books. I don't know at this point during me recording this video if I'm gonna be able to find this footage, but if I do, I'm gonna put it right here. And I see this peeking out from one of the stacks of books. And I thought to myself, I'm pretty sure I know what cover that is. And if I'm correct, and that book is just aimlessly laying there in a random stack of books, who knows what else is in this collection? So I double checked myself to see if I was right, and I was. It was the book I was thinking of. I'm not gonna unveil this book for a little bit. So if you're watching at home, see if you can guess before I say what book that this actually is. Now at this point, my interest is highly peaked, but there's still that one major problem, the distance, the nine hour drive on a whim. I don't even know if this book that I think is here has all of its pages. I don't know if the back of it is completely glued to a stack of comics from water damage. I have no idea. So I tell the guy I'm interested and I said, okay, how much are you looking to get for all these books? At this point he said, my wife is so fed up with this and I am too. I just want them out. You'd be doing me a favor by getting rid of them. He's like, if I can get $1,000 for everything, keep in mind, this is about 13 long boxes. He's like, if I can get $1,000 for everything, uh, he said, I will be happy. So I reply back to him and I did explain to him that is a good price. However, the amount of gas and time for me to drive down there, plus none of these are properly protected. It's still a risk as far as condition wise that I can't see. Uh, plus the amount of materials, bags and boards that I'm gonna need to get for all of these books if they are salvageable. I said, how about this? If you can guarantee me no matter what, when I get there, $750 takes all, I'll make it happen. I'll get to you and we'll, we'll make this deal work. That sounds great deal. When can you get here? Uh, at this point, I was in no rush to drive nine hours to go get this stuff. With work and everything, it was gonna be hard to just venture out there for a comic book collection. So I told him I would get back to him as soon as possible when I knew I could get down there. So the very next weekend, my friends suggest, hey, 
what if we went to Halloween Horror Nights for opening weekend? And I was like, yeah, that sounds like that'd be fun. Wait. Wait. Yes. That is a fantastic idea. I said, let's do it. Let's go. We're going to go do Halloween Horror Nights. I'm going to go and check out this comic collection and pick it up. It'll be perfect. I had my excuse and I had more of an incentive now to go. So I told the guy, said, great news. Guess what? On this weekend, this date, we're going to be down there. So he was like, great. He's like, I will see you when you guys get here. Here's my address. Contact me when you're close by. Now, I'm not kidding when I say I spent the next month and a half almost every night dissecting photos, scrubbing video footage, staring at the corner of this comic that I see. It was actually kind of fun and the anticipation was very nice. So the week finally arrives, we head down to Kissimmee. Now at this point, I've watched so much footage and videos of this guy's garage and where these books are in order that when I get to his house, I knew exactly where to go, what stack to pick up that I can actually look at the book that piqued my interest. So the day comes, me and my buddy, we get in the car, we drive over there, I go in, I pick up the stack of books, and lo and behold, there it is the book that I've been staring at for the past month and a half. And of course, real quick, I would like to send out a quick reminder to check out the links below for where I sell comics, Instagram, Shortbox, eBay, and whatnot. Also, if you think this video deserved a like, hit the like button on your way out and consider subscribing. So, what book was it that I saw? The book was Batman 171, first appearance of the Riddler in the Silver Age of Comics. What a monster. And, well, as you can see, it's in pretty decent condition. I could not wait to get home and start digging through this. Once I saw this, all kinds of other books that you can imagine in the Silver Age of DC start popping into my head. As much fun as I was having in Halloween Horror Nights, which just on any other day of the week would be so exciting for me, I had a carload of comic books it's just the, the biggest mystery box that you could think of with all the payoff in the world, and I already knew it was going to pay off. So we have a great time. We finally get back home, and that's it. I start rummaging. Are you ready for what I got? Keep in mind, these are books that are still in my possession that I have not sold yet. I have already sold, probably from this collection, close to around $2,000 worth of sales from other miscellaneous DC keys, but the biggest ones I kept because they will be sent off to CGC. Let's check them out. Now I will post values and the minimum grade of what these books would be. So for instance, if I think it's a seven, I'm gonna say it's a 6.5, just to be on the absolute safe side of what the values of some of these comics are. So we'll start off with Batman 171, the beacon of light that led me to this treasure trove. First Silver Age appearance of the Riddler. Gorgeous copy. Batman 386, first appearance of Black Mask. Batman 357, first full appearance of Killer Croc and Jason Todd. The entire classic Frank Miller series of The Dark Knight Returns. Detective Comics number 411, the first appearance of Talia al Ghul. Batman number 235, this is the first cover appearance of Talia al Ghul, second appearance of Ra's al Ghul, and a classic gorgeous Neil Adams cover. Detective Comics number 405, this is the first appearance of the League of Assassins. DC Superstars of Magic number 11, an awesome Zatanna cover. Are you ready for the heat? This is about to get, this is about to get wild. Here we go. We had Batman issue number 234, the first Silver Age appearance of Two-Face. We also have Batman issue number 135, first Silver Age appearance of the Penguin. Batman 189, first Silver Age appearance of the Scarecrow. Detective Comics number 359, first appearance of Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl. And these books here are always beat to crap. Always. And as you can see, it is a pretty solid copy. We have a high grade, and I'm talking a high grade copy, 9.0 .0 minimum of Batman 232, first appearance of Rage Al Ghul. To kind of give you an idea, I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but look how sharp the corners are on this. 
I'm hoping that this can get like a 9.4-ish, uh, maybe a 9.6, but this is a 9.0 minimum. And we had this monster right here. Batman issue 181, first appearance of Poison Ivy. This book, um, I'm hoping is going to hit the 8.0 mark. This thing is no less than a 7.0. Just impossible less than a 7.0. And last but definitely not least, we had the classic Batman 423, which I cleaned, pressed, and got graded and signed by the Todd Father himself. And it came out to a 9.6. Now, I know some of you guys might be thinking, well, shoot, if the condition was all that bad and they weren't stored properly, uh, how can these books hit like a 9.6 and the potential grades that you say they are? Well, here's the thing when it comes to storing comics. If you have enough of them, they end up preserving themselves if they're in the middle of the pack. So the other comics towards the outside of the boxes will end up taking the brunt of whatever moisture and you know poor environment that you're storing them in. But the ones that are jam-packed in the middle are actually pretty well preserved. And that's kind of what was happening with this collection. A couple more. No, we did have a Green Lantern number 87, first appearance of Jon Stewart. Uh, we also had number 85, and we actually had a lot of this Green Lantern run. A couple of them are actually in the press right now. Another thing that was part of this collection that I've already sold, one was a first Power Girl that I think sold for a couple of hundred dollars, graded at a 7.0. I also had the second appearance of Black Adam in this collection, which I sold for, I think, $500 that graded out in an 8.0. So that right there is the story. One of the, uh, probably the greatest collection, $750. I say $10,000 because I know that's a benchmark based off of what I sold already and what is still yet to be graded. I know that for sure that this collection was worth at least that, if not double. Uh, a lot of this depends on, as you may know, the grades and how they come back. But for the longest time, I really wanted to share that story with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe some of these books can end up in your collection. Uh, check out those descriptions in the links below. Also, another real quick fun announcement. We are about to start the Paper Chase podcast. This is just going to be a little fun. It's just going to be fun. Us hanging out, having a drink and talking. And uh, we're excited. Me and Reverend Wormwood Comics are going to kick it off. And uh, it'll be comics. It'll be movies. It'll be anything and everything that we're interested in. So... You guys should definitely check that out. Hit the notification bell so you know when I drop content and when podcasts and things like that turn up. Thanks so much again, guys, for checking out the video, and I'll see you on the next one.